Hey everybody, this is Ty Terrell with IFAST University. This month we're going to talk about volume. This is going to be an introductory uh, conversation or talk about how volume affects uh, our adaptations that take place in our programming. The volume of training load is simply the quantitative aspects in our training. It's the things that we can measure. Uh, and they play a huge role, a very important role in the adaptations that take place, uh, our ability to recover or not recover uh, from our programming. To bring about a positive adaptation in our training, we have to have enough volume uh, in our training that, that overloads our body or overloads our system. So our body responds to that, that overload and creates an adaptation. The adaptation only takes place if the load is above uh, our body's norm. Anything below that will either just maintain or detrain that ability. If a client or athlete uses the same training load for too long and, and we don't uh, uh, progress the volume or progress the intensity, uh, the body will no longer adapt to it. It'll just accommodate to that load. Progressive overloading is simply a method of challenging our body uh, continuously throughout our programming. So we're, we're always adding either volume or intensity in our training load to ensure that the adaptation that we want to take place actually takes place. Programming has a lot of layers to it. There's reps, there's sets, there's, there's training weeks, there's training blocks, there's you know, macro cycles and all that depending on, on if, you know, what you're used to reading there. So let's break it down a little bit at the lower la uh, layers and then build it back up to see how volume impacts our training process. Within a set, you could have any number of range of reps, you know, from uh, one to three if we're training like for max strength or all the way up to 15 to 20 or more if you're trying to train for muscular endurance. But what you have to ask yourself is, what is my client's goals and what does my client need uh, to improve their performance? Now we can measure volume in, in a couple ways. We can either measure it in reps or we can measure it in time under tension. Time under tension is simply the amount of time your muscles are under load or have to work. There are different types of strength training. There's uh, maybe for younger athletes, there's tissue prep. Then we have hypertrophy, max strength, power, and so on. So let's talk about how volume's uh, used in, in, in those subsets. Tissue prep is simply, it's, it's usually used in younger athletes. It's just a way, it's general prep to get the athlete prepared to start doing more dynamic or strenuous activity. It's, it's light to medium loads, um, usually not to failure. And that's, that's probably the main difference between hypertrophy and tissue prep is, is hypertrophy, you're trying to build muscle mass, so a lot of times you'll go to failure uh, at some point in the workout. Uh, with tissue prep, you, you don't always have to. You'll be somewhere between 30 seconds and 70 seconds. Uh, you'll have that of time under tension within a set. Tissue prep is, is simply extensive work with moderate you know, loads, moderate intensity. If tissue prep is not done with younger athletes, it can lead to, to breakdown once that athlete reaches their sport. Um, because when the sport, when we're in our game, we don't have the opportunity to man uh, manage uh, volume and intensity. The game is what it is. So if our tissues are not prepared for that, uh, there could be too much of a load in the sport. And that's when you can start getting knee pain, joint pain, muscle strains, etc. Now let's talk about hypertrophy. I just mentioned that hypertrophy was similar to tissue prep as far as time under tension. You can get anywhere, and this is, this is uh, approximate times, but anywhere from maybe 30 up to 60 seconds. Um, but the difference between hypertrophy and tissue prep, as I mentioned before, is that you have to stress the body a little bit more. So we have to get near failure or to failure to create the adaptation uh, to grow uh, the muscle and, 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 and increase mass. When training for hypertrophy, we need enough volume that a change is going to occur. So this is, a, this is an area where um, if you want to get growth, muscle growth, or, or in, increase mass, you have to have a pretty large amount of volume. So that could be anywhere from 40 to 50 uh, reps in a workout, you know, for maybe a, a younger athlete, uh, up to, I mean, I've seen guys even 80, you know, to 100 reps uh, to get extreme there for more, you know, experienced trained athlete. When talking volume for max strength, we're usually talking typically between f or five reps or less per set. So the total time under tension or total volume in a set is going to be much less than that of uh, hypertrophy or, or tissue prep. 
Now with that said, younger training age athletes will get a strength, typically get a strength improvement from almost any form of resistance training, whether it's you know, a tissue prep, hypertrophy, max strength, whatever it is, their bodies will respond to it if they're early on in their training process. For muscle endurance, the volume is, is, is pretty extreme. It's anywhere from at a minimum of 15 to 20 reps and can be you know, even up to 100 potentially. Uh, you're talking about over 60 seconds uh, at a minimum per set. For power training, the volume in it within a set is usually going to be much shorter. When training power, you're usually using the alactic uh, energy system, which is a short explosive energy system. So you're talking, you know, at the most 15 seconds and, and, and tip more often sub 15 seconds, six to eight seconds for a lot of team uh, court sport athletes there. A rule of thumb for determining how much volume to do within a set should be performance. Performance can be measured whether it's speed, uh, power, uh, whether it's technique and how, you know, how well your form is within exercise. So once you start to see these, these determining factors drop off below your accepted level, the set should be ended and that's enough volume for that time. Now let's talk about volume uh, on the next layer up, which would be uh, within an exercise. We're talking sets and reps here, okay? So previously we talked about volume within a set. Now let's talk about how many sets. Uh, if you're gonna do tissue prep, you may only have to go, you don't need a lot of sets, you can go maybe two to three. Uh, again, these are, these are athletes or clients with a very young or beginning training age and so you don't need a lot of volume there to get an adaptation. With hypertrophy this is where we want to get a, a lot of volume and actually the name of the game with hypertrophy is to get volume. Uh, so you can orchestrate this a number of different ways. You can be creative with how you want to amass your volume. You can do the standard three sets of 10, four sets of 10, five sets of 10 until you get the amount of volume that you want. Or you could organize it in a different way where say, I'm gonna do as many sets of six reps with 60 seconds of rest until I can't do anymore. And so I, I actually like that way better because it's self-limiting. And Mike Robertson did a great video this month on rest periods that can kind of correlate with this video uh, on volume and because all these qualities are, are, are interconnected and, and help determine the adaptation that takes place. I will kind of caution you in hypertrophy to, uh, maybe this is a personal thing, but to not necessarily kind of, you know, use all your gas right up front because if the name of the game is volume I need to be able to work out for a while and if I'm going to failure right off the bat my first set I'm probably limiting how much I can do down the road uh, uh, and down the road meaning the rest of the workout. For max strength training the volume can be looked at in a couple of different ways. You have to ask yourself what training phase are you in? If max strength is the, is the quality that you're trying to train in this phase, if that's your primary target, then you may end up doing a lot of sets. You could end up doing anywhere from you know, three to you know, eight up to even maybe even 10 sets of <clears throat> a very few reps, you know, maybe two, three, uh, probably no more than five uh, to get the max strength adaptation. If you're simply trying to maintain strength, you can use as few sets as two to three uh, with potentially two to three reps and that will help you maintain strength while you're training another quality. A general rule for how many sets to use when training max strength is simply when form breaks down. Uh, if you're using heavy loads, the, 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 you know, the, it's, it's more dangerous, there's a greater threat of injury. So we don't wanna be lifting uh, with, with poor technique, poor form, and, and we don't want to be lifting when there's a breakdown occurring. So that will, your, your client or your athlete will tell you when they've done enough sets and it's when you see their form break down. For muscle endurance, the volume is really determined by the client or the athlete that you have in front of you. If it's a, a weight loss client where they need a lot of volume uh, and, and we're trying to manage the amount of stress we put on their body because they're going to be doing a lot of volume, we may want to lighten the lo load and increase the reps. Uh, so maybe you're looking at you know, three to four sets of 20, potentially even five sets of 20 depending on their capacity. Uh, for a power lifter, they don't need muscle endurance. They, they do one-off rep or one-off sets. and so. Uh, you know, we don't need to do a lot of muscle endurance, if any at all, with them.
You know, you take another athlete, you take an athlete like an MMA fighter who may do five minute rounds for multiple rounds within a fight, they're gonna need a lot of muscle endurance and how you get that muscle endurance is up to you. You know, feel free to be creative, but they're gonna be doing multiple sets of 15 to 20 and, and, and maybe even plus reps. I have an MMA fighter and he was getting upwards of 70, 75 reps sometimes uh, within an exercise, um, you know, to, to kind of maintain muscle endurance train his energy system so he would be effective in the ring. You know, a term I like to use for muscle endurance is simply strength cardio. And that kind of sums it up for me. You're lightening the loads enough to where you can do a lot of reps, you can burn a lot of energy, it's training the aerobic system. Uh, I found it to be very effective uh, for adult clients and, and, and sometimes even depending on the training age, some younger athletes if they need to uh, uh, get comfortable with movements and prepare their tissues. The sets for power work are really determined by two things, your client or athlete's capacity to do the work and the needs of their sport or activity. So if I have you know, an MMA fighter who's going to go for multiple rounds and long rounds, he's gonna need a lot of power capacity. Uh, if I have a, a power lifter uh, who does one rep at a time, you don't need a lot of capacity. Uh, if I have you know, a, a 800 meter you know, sprinter, I'm probably going to have to be training them, you know, to have a good amount of power capacity there so they can, you know, maintain speed throughout the race and hopefully have a really good kick at the end. Referring back to the, the rule of thumb I mentioned earlier about uh, when do you know you've done enough volume, uh, when you're doing a power exercise, speed is, is, is the top quality that you're looking for. So when speed starts to decrease, in the exercise, it's probably time to cut the sets and that's enough volume for that day because now you are no longer training for power. Now let's talk about volume within a training week. And so this is, this is where the art of, of, of programming comes into play. You can get creative with how you're uh, manipulating uh, your, vol your volume through the week so you, know, you, you make sure you're ensuring the adaptation that you want takes place. Now we have to take, talk about a couple different things. There's a cumulative load and fatigue uh, throughout a week when you're working out multiple times. So for example, if you do a really hard workout on Monday and a really hard workout on Wednesday and a really hard workout on Friday, the fatigue from Monday and, and Wednesday are probably going to add, uh, are, are probably going to come with you into Friday's workout if you haven't recovered fully. So this is just a factor that we have to keep in mind when programming. And we'll go over the recovery process here in a second and to show you how you can maybe uh, periodize or manipulate, uh, manage your volume through the week. So this is a simple drawing of what the recovery process looks like. Each green square up top represents a workout or when a workout took place. This purple line across is like your normal ability, your normal uh, what you walk into uh, on, on a rested day. And the lines here, the curves, are what occurs uh, when a workout takes place. So when I do a hard workout, the resources in my body drop below my norm. The recovery starts to take place, but then I have a second hard workout and that drops me again. I start to recover a little bit, but then I have a third hard workout and it drops me again. So you're noticing I'm never getting back to my normal if I'm not managing my volume throughout the week very well. I just continuously tank myself a little bit lower with each really hard workout. Now let's take a look at the recovery process when we uh, manage our work volume uh, throughout the week. So again, each green square up here represents a workout. The exception is, or the, the difference between the last uh, picture we went over and this one is, all three of these aren't max out heavy workouts. You have a heavy workout that drops my resources down. I recover a little bit. I do a lighter workout so it doesn't drop me, my resources as much, I recover higher, I do a medium workout, it, re it drops me a little bit, and then this fourth one is a deload week or a recovery week where my workloads are really light and it, my resources boost up above my norm. This fourth week, the deload week, is where adaptations take place. The body has to have enough energy available to actually work on the adaptation that we want to happen. If we're continuously burying our body and, and, and robbing that energy and resources, it will never have a chance to actually create the adaptation that our training is trying to create.
Now volume alone does not determine the adaptation process. Intensity works with volume to create the adaptation that we want. We just went over the recovery process and, and we saw how managing our volume through the week can help create the adaptation that we want. If we're not managing volume, if we're constantly uh, training with excessive volume, then you notice that we will not get the adaptation uh, that, that the programming is, is geared towards. Another thing to consider when you're programming volume is what is your client or athlete doing outside of the gym? If it's an athlete, they're playing a lot through the week or on the weekend, you have to consider that when you're programming uh, you know, how much work, how much volume you're going to do with them in the gym, how much stress you're going to be applying to their bodies. If we have an adult client, we have, to, we have to ask ourselves, what are they doing outside the gym as well? So are they an adult athlete preparing for a marathon, a triathlete, do they work late hours? Um, these are things that, can, well, that, that should be considered when determining how much volume to put into their programming. I'm going to leave you with a last thought here, and this is kind of um, just kind of give you a guideline on, on how long uh, we, should be, we should be training a quality and how much volume we should have in, a, in training a specific quality. There's going to be a max limit on how much volume you can do when training a, a specific quality. So, for example, let's say max strength. I can only train max strength for so long before my body's ability to adapt to that training is, is, is gone. Uh, or diminishes. So at that point in time, we've reached enough volume in that, that specific quality. Now when you move on to another quality you want to train, you can continue to add low amounts or low levels of volume on the past quality. So let's say we go from max strength to power. We can still program low volumes of max strength in our, in our workout to maintain that max strength that we just trained. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this lesson on volume. I hope this helps you better understand how we can use volume uh, to create an adaptation that we want, how we can use volume to manipulate uh, our training through uh, a, a workout, uh, a training week, and a training block to create the adaptation that we want. If you guys like this video or find it useful, please feel uh, free to forward it to a friend. You can also visit us at ifastuniversity.com to check out more.